Biodiversity is the foundation of ecosystem services to which human well-being is intimately linked. No feature of Earth is more complex, dynamic, and varied than the layer of living organisms that occupy its surfaces and its seas. And no feature is experiencing more dramatic change at the hands of human than this extraordinary singularity unique feature of Earth. Okay, biodiversity is defined as the variability among living organisms from all sources, including other um, uh, others like terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems, and the ecological complexes of which they are part. And there are three levels of biodiversity. One is genetic, ito yung variability within the species. Uh, kung mapansin nyo sa isang species like uh, tayo, tao, isang species yan, we have variability, may black and buho, brown, ganun, uh, matangkan, maliit, mataba, ganun. Yun ang variability within the species. That's the genetic uh, level. The species level, yung diversity within the species level, may mga iba ibang species of plants or animals na magkaka-level sila. Okay? And then ecosystem level, ito yung variation ng mga iba ibang habitats or ecosystem like you have you have the, the marine ecosystem you have the forest ecosystem you have the mangroves mga open na ecosystem you have the grassland ecosystem ganon. okay so uh, that's when we talk about biodiversity we cannot avoid to talk about the how diverse the philippines uh, that biodiversity is The Philippines is a mega-diversity country, one of the 17 countries identified as containing 60 to 70 percent of the world's biodiversity. In mga bio, uh, mega-diversity countries, there are 17 of them, two-thirds of Earth's biodiversity or 70 to 80 percent of the world's endangered species are confined within these 17 mega-diverse countries. That includes the Philippines, China, Papua New Guinea, Australia, Indonesia, Malaysia, in India, Madagascar, South Africa, the, the, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Brazil, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Mexico, and the United States. To now to give you a picture of how diverse the Philippine biodiversity is, the Philippines is fifth in the world in number of plant species and maintains 5% of the world's flora. So 5% of the world's one mga halaman natin ay nasa Pilipinas. Very high species of endemism cover at least 25 genera of plant and 45% of terrestrial wildlife. Pag sinabi natin endemism, ito yung tinatawag na endemic, um, yung dito lang nakikita ng mga plants or animals. So 25% uh, of the genera of plant and uh, 49% of the uh, genera of terrestrial wildlife are endemic to the Philippines and the fourth in the world in bird endemism. With regards to the mammals, the Philippines is also fifth in the world endemism and has the second highest seagrass diversity in the world, second only to Australia. Because in Australia, malaki yung uh, Great Barrier Reef. Ecosystems the diversity Yung sinabi ko kanina, there are three levels, species, uh, genetic species, and um, ecosystem. Pag tinignan natin ecosystem diversity, there are various uh, uh, ecosystems in the Philippines. So the tropical lowland, evergreen forest, tropical lower mountain rainforest, tropical upper mountain rainforest, tropical subalpine forest, forest cover uh, over, limes, over limestone, forest over ultramatic rocks, the mangrove forest, the beach forest, 
the um, peat swamp forest, the freshwater swamp forest, the tropical semi evergreen rainforest, and the tropical moist deciduous forest. So, sa forest alone, marami ng iba ibang klase. Kita nyo? So, we have 12 forest formations in the Philippines. Coastal and Marine Biodiversity. The Philippines being situated at the apex of the Coral Triangle. We have may kinatap tayong Coral Triangle Initiative. Uh, ito yung nag-form ng triangle na ganon that covers the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, uh, and other countries. And um, that said Coral Triangle is considered to be the richest marine ecoregion in the world or the world's center of marine biodiversity. Ito siya. Uh, the coastline covers about 37,000 kilo kilometers, the sixth longest in the world, and the coral reef systems covering about 22,500 square kilometers, the third largest in the Philippines in the world. So, ano ba yung kwan natin? So, ito yung mga biodiversity hotspot. Pag pinawag natin yung biodiversity hotspot, ito yung mga nanganganib na yung kanilang biodiversity na mawala. Uh, ito yung uh, may mga na, na, na e extinct na yung uh, biodiversity niya. One of, the, one of 25 lost at least 70% of the original habitat. Itong mga biodiversity hotspots nito. Kasama ang Philippines. Yung mga nasa red one. Red, um, uh, kulay na red na mga maps. Conservation of biological diversity leads to conservation of essential ecological diversity to preserve the continuity of food chains. The genetic diversity of plants and animals is preserved. Biodiversity conservation serves as an insurance policy for the future. Ano ba yung mga approaches natin to biodiversity conservation? Ex situ. When you say ex situ is outside of their natural habitat. Kukuha ka ng animal na marapit ng extinct or endangered species, doon ka mag-alagaan mo sa labas ng kanyang habitat. Padamihin mo. Gaya yung ginagawa sa Philippine Eagle, di ba? May mga Eagle Center tayo kung saan pinapropagate sila, inaalaw na mag-dumami, saka binabalik sa kanilang natural habitat. In situ naman, example na, in situ is gene banks, botanical gardens, ganun, sa mga halaman yan. And then, in situ, conservation within the ecosystems or natural habitats. Ito, doon sa protected areas natin sila inaalagaan. Like the Tamarao, andun lang siya sa Mindoro. Iyon ang habitat niya. The Philippine Eagle, andun lang siya sa kanyang um, habitat sa Mindanao. Ganon. Yung mga protected areas natin, marami yung protected areas sa Philippines. These are areas that are widely recognized as the most effective tool for uh, the on-site conservation of biological diversity. Ito yung importance ng mga protected areas. They are important for the conservation and protection of representative samples uh, of uh, unique, rare, and threatened species of plants and animals and outstanding habitats and ecosystems, including cultural diversity. Uh, they are also uh, declared because of their ecosystem services and uh, it is one of the classifications of public domain in the Philippines when enacted in Congress. Pag nag ano ka ng isang PA, ito yung uh, ikukonserve mo na yung area, ipoprotect mo yung area for conservation purposes, for eco ecosystem services. Pag sinabi natin yung ecosystem services, marami yan. Questions uh, uh, ko. May tinatawag tayong ecosystem services. Di ba, tatanong mo kung nag-affect siya ng human life. Meron tayong tinatawag na ecosystem services. So the best way that you can make biodiversity very tangible to, to students, to ordinary people, to citizens, is to actually um, showcase yung value niya kapag nawala siya. Okay? Medyo mahirap i-equate into a monetary form ang uh, ecosystem services natin. Pero basically, in order for our policymakers, in order for someone to appreciate what biodiversity is, we need to mention ecosystem services. So ang ecosystem 
system services or direct or indirect benefits that you can get from a healthy working ecosystem. Okay? So, kinakategorize natin siya into four groups. Tinatawag natin siya, yung pinaka-importante dyan would be, ang laging namamanifest ng mga tao is your provisioning. Pag sinabi natin provisioning ecosystem service, yun yung direct na nakukuha natin dahil kinoconsume natin siya. For example, food. Saan ka ba kung kuha ng food? ba diba? Sa saan? Sa environment. ba diba? Sa mga agricultural lands natin. And agricultural lands is also part of biodiversity. Kasi buhay yun. ba diba? So, without those, hindi ka makakuha ng grains mo, ng, ng rice mo for you to be able to eat rice, for example. Okay? Yun yung, uh, for example, fish. Coastal marine resources natin. Kumakain tayo ng isda. We have, um, we have livestock. Okay? So, that's really, that's also part of your provisioning services. Lahat ng Halos nakukuha ng mga tao in a tangible manner, like yun. Yan, madali yan i-value. Madali yan i-monetary terms. Okay? Pero yung hindi natin ma-monetize talaga is, for example, yung regulating. Pag sinabi mo ka na regulating, may kinalaman siya sa climate regulation. Diba? Uh, uh, we thank our trees kasi yung trees yung nagsishade us uh, nagsishade ng pag-increase ng temperature sa buong mundo, di ba? So, di ba, the reason nga why we're trying to plant more and more trees is because of the carbon emissions that we have. Kasi yung trees mo also helps in climate regulation. Kaya yung oceans mo, kailangan pangalagaan. Kasi healthy oceans would need more oxygen for us to breathe in. So, your, your ocean supply more 80% of um, the oxygen around the world. It's not really the forest, but rather the ocean. So, yun yung mga nire-regulate ng healthy ecosystems mo. And then you have your supporting, like for example, nutrient cycle. Kaya mo bang mag-recycle ng carbon? Ikaw lang mag-isa. Kaya bang gawin ng tao yun? Di ba hindi? Kaya ba natin mag-gawa ng soil? Di ba hindi? Kasi lahat yun part ng ecosystem services. Okay? Um, you have cultural value. Diba, minsan kapag lumabas ka in an environment like this, makita ka lang ng very nature-y na taas ka ng mundo. It gives you relaxation. It gives you a sense of peace. Yung mga indigenous people natin, they treat their nat- uh, their environment or their nature or kung saan sa mansan ka tayo, mga mountains, as sacred. So, meron siyang cultural value na hindi natin may cha-translate uh, into a monetary term. Diba? So, all in all, yung lahat ng yan, at the end of the day, will affect human being kasi. So, pag, sinab- pag um, sinira mo yung environment mo, makakat down or ma-restrict ang ating mga ecosystem services. So, kapag na-cut down yun, na-apektuhan yung well-being na ba? People tend to depend their being in biodiversity, but we didn't know that there was also threats to biodiversity that can result to biodiversity loss. These major threats identified by United Nations Environment Program are the following. Number 1. Habitat loss. It is the biggest threat in biodiversity that serves as a result in extinction of a species. Pag sinabi ito ni Hatulitat Loss, ibig sabihin may mga conversion ng forest lands, for example, for settlements, for agricultural lands, kasi kita niyo yung bundok, kinakawal mo siya, di ba? So, pag nawala yung natural habitat ng biodiversity natin, ecosystem services are also being affected. Like regulating, provisioning, and stuff. Pag hindi mo siya ginamit, ito yung mga. Number two, pollution. All forms of pollution pose a serious threat to biodiversity, but in particular nutrient loading, primary of nitrogen and phosphorus, which is a major and increasing cause of biodiversity loss and ecosystem dysfunction. Very, um, pollution kasi can come in the form of chemicals, can come in the form of solid waste, okay? Yung pollution na yan, um, Toxic sila minsan for biodiversity, and you don't know what will, how it will affect, okay, um, the entire ecosystem. 
Number 3. Climate change. Climate change is affecting the habitats of several species which must either adapt or migrate to areas with more favorable conditions. Even small changes in average temperatures can have a significant effect upon ecosystems. Uh, also, we have climate change. Alam naman natin na pag nagtumataas ang temperature around the world, naapektuhan yung balance ng pagpamuhay or yung adaptive capacity ng not only of the wildlife but also of the people. Kasi, uh, di ba, kapag sobrang init, minsan hindi naman na kaya makapag-work, di ba? Parang ganun din yun sa nature. Kapag sobrang init, minsan nahihirapan siya makapag-adapt to the environment na mamatay na lang. Number four, over expectation. Over hunting, over fishing, or over collecting of species can quickly lead to its decline. Currently, about a third of the world's endangered vertebrates are threatened by over exploitation. Over exploitation. Over exploitation uh, is goes hand in hand with habitat loss. Habitat loss difference. Na wala na yung function ng habitat para makapag support ng wildlife. Pag sinabi natin over exploitation, uh, masyado tayo nag harvest ng sobrang daming uh, resources from that particular area. Na hindi mo na binibigyan yung area na yun makarecover or makarecover or makaregenerate before mo siya kunan ulit. Kasi nature naman yan eh. Nature has this natural ability to adapt to change. Number five. Invasive alien species. Invasive alien species are plants, animals, pathogens, and other organisms that are non-native to an ecosystem and which may cause economic or environmental harm or adversely affect human health. The last uh, principal driver of Philippine biodiversity loss is the invasive alien species. Ito, hindi to alam ng karamihan, pero um, bakit siya tinawag na invasive? Kasi kinakain eh, hindi naman kinakain. Nauubos ang ating mga natural biodiversity dahil nag i tayo ng exotics. Yung exotic kasi galing sa ibang bansa, galing sa, galing sa ibang bansa, or ini-introduce sa atin. For example, yung janitor fish. Janitor fish, wala namang janitor fish na native sa atin. Eh. Ang tendency, kapag ini-introduce mo yan, tapos ginagay mo yan sa body of water, so yung body of water, nag-drive siya doon, ang tendency makipag-compete siya with our natural fauna. So kapag nakapag-compete siya at na-realize niya na, ay, mas malakas ako dito, wala akong natural predator kasi yung mga natives natin may natural predators na. So yung food chain system, okay pa. Pero kapag nag-introduce ka, wala naman siyang natural predator, hindi sila naturally mauubos. So ang tendency nila makipag-compete sila with the native na species natin. Mauubusan ng resources yung native natin. So, nawawala yung dating na sa ating tayo. Sila yung nagdodominate. Sila yung, nag, yung, mga, yung mga invasive species yung nagdodominate. And kapag nagdominate sila, paano na yung mga dating nakatira sa atin? Eh, yun nga yung dapat mabubuhay sa kind of environment na meron tayo. Sila yung nagpa-function para maging healthy yung ecosystem natin. For example, um, Ayun nga, sinabi ko, janitor fish. Uh, meron pa marami yan eh. Alam pa rin, may nakita na ba kayong flower na parang nakabukas siya at parang nagtatangga? Puti lang siya. Yan ay tinatawag natin yung buyo-buyo. So, yung buyo-buyo kasi, hindi siya native sa atin. Tapos gumamit na siya sa atin. So, kaya nawawala yung mga native plants natin na namumulak-lak. Kasi, tumutubo siya everywhere. Nagkipag-compute siya with our native flora. Okay? As the threat to biodiversity comes in line and is not prevented, consequences of biodiversity loss enters. These consequences will affect half of the whole population in the world in their daily lives. If biodiversity loss occurs, we will have to pay for cost of pollination, irrigation, soil reclamation, and other functions of the nature if it is unable to take care of itself. There will be also threats to existing species and increase in contact with diseases. Loss of livelihoods is also an effect of biodiversity loss. For example, if the ocean ecosystem collapses, the entire communities built near it lose their means of employment as well. 
Biodiversity affects one's life, especially one's health. According to World Health Organization, all aspects of human well-being depend on ecosystems, goods, and services, which in turn depend on biodiversity. Biodiversity loss can destabilize ecosystems, promote outbreaks or infectious diseases, and undermine nutrition security and protection from natural disasters. In order to keep our Earth serving us, we should also serve her as well, and that includes promoting safekeeping of our biodiversity. In promoting of it, we should act up to prevent biodiversity loss. And to prevent biodiversity loss, we must at least do small ways that can help in promoting safekeeping in our biodiversity. Here are some of those small ways we can do to help our biodiversity. Ways you can help. Number one, participate in environmental events and have personal commitment to the environment. Um, pag sinabi natin participate in environmental events, mag-join tayo ng mga tree planting activities, mag-join tayo ng mga sustainable not only tree planting activities but also coastal cleanups kasi meron namang mga partnerships dyan may nakakon for volunteers for environmental concerns be an advocate of something be an advocate of your personal commitment the small things that you can do by evading for example single use plastics will already help um, by segregating your trash at home the normal things that you can napapagalan naman natin ito sa grade school mahirap lang siyang i-commit yung ating yung sirili diba? Um, not patronizing yung pagbili ng mga wildlife is already a personal commitment sa ayaw ko naman gandong product. To engage yourself in social media, lead up. Okay, be aware of the environmental um, concerns or issues, especially regarding biodiversity. Kasi this is one of the most or the least talked about pagdating sa policy. So, hindi nila na-appreciate na kailangan natin yung mga wildlife natin. Okay. So next, be a responsible tourist. Kasi may hilig tayo ngayon, di ba? Punta sa isang place, pag Instagram lang, okay na. Ang tendency kasi noon, kapag nag-overpopulate yung tourism, hindi na nasusupport the habit. Certain carrying capacity kasi ang ating tourist spot. Kapag hindi, or nag-exceed dun sa carrying capacity, dahil sa mga trash, dahil sa number of people na apektuhan, pati yung ecosystem mo. Okay? So be a responsible tourist. Um, inform yung tourist party niya, pupunta kayo, for example, pay the necessary fees, you understand yun na may environmental fees na kailangan to, to maintain that particular place. And, kapag umakit kayo ng bundok, for example, leave no trace. Uh, leave no crash. Okay. Leave no trace. Okay? And finally, maximize the use of your resources. Kung ano meron kayo ngayon, gamitin na nyo muna bago kayo mag-set ng video. Yung culture kasi ng consumption, masyado na siyang excessive. Tignan nyo, ang daming malls, na ba? Ang daming, ang daming binibenta in retail. Hindi ko naman sinasabing huwag na kayong bumili ng mga damit. Pero as much as possible, if you can still use something, okay, use it at the most possible extent, okay? And not dispose it until meron pa siyang use. Kasi the throwaway culture is very, it be, naging consumer, masyado tayo naging over-consumerism na siya. Na hindi na nakocontrol ng mga tao kung ano yung kailangan lang talaga. Hindi na distinguish kung anong kailangan talaga from the want. Okay? And I think that drives it. Yung private sector drives it. Yung consumerism. So if we can control that consumerism attitude or the throwaway culture, then we can definitely help them. Una sa lahat, isaayos natin ang ating kapaligiran. Ayusin uh, ang basura. Basi, kasi pollution is one of the threats, may uh, major drive uh, for the loss of biodiversity. Ayusin ang mga basura. Huwag mong hayaan na ganun na lang napupunta sa ating mga katubigan or pupunta sa ating mga uh, uh, forest. Kasi uh, they are uh, they will form part of the uh, Uh, parang environment doon at maaring makain ng mga ating uh, resources, mga animals natin. Practice also plant a tree. Plant and plant and plant. And then, uh, sana huwag yung, mas, uh, yung mga important na um, uh, plants na yan natin, kundi yung mga indigenous. Yung mga nasa Pilipinas niya, yun ipropagate natin para mas marami. Huwag tayong walwal na gamitin na natin lahat ng mga resources na nasa atin ngayon. 
uh, leave behind think of the future uh, people uh, more or uh, in the next uh, 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 generation kahit sabihin mong uh, uh, kailang kailang mo ngayon you have also to think of the next generation they also want to meet their needs uh, that's a, the, the, the key there is sustainability um, ng mga resources ipasa natin na maayos para naman makapamuhay naman mga susunod na generation so nagko-complement nag yung PBSOP natin dito sa lahat ng plants na ito meron na sa SDG, IG Biodiversity Targets, yung Philippine Development Plan, tapos yung plan natin yung ano, uh, environment, conservation. So, napaka-important nga no, yung contribution uh, pag-achieve natin dun sa targets na sinet ng Philippines. Tapos ang um, pag-develop nitong plan na ito, hindi lang siya DNR, no? hindi lang DNR ang nag- uh, construct ng plan na to, ng develop. Hindi, katulong dyan yung iba't ibang agencies kasi hindi naman kaya ang implement to ng uh, DNR alone. So, kabilang dyan yung uh, DA, Department of Agriculture, so other NGAs, no, other national government agencies, local government units, yung academ, important kasi din yung tulong na may bibigay ng academ sila yung nagkakundak ng research and biodiversity. So, for example, yung mga pag-discover uh, pag ng mga bagong species ng uh, plants and animals, sila yung nagkakundak. So, patulong natin sila. So, uh, sa de pag-develop ng uh, plan, katulong natin sila. And then, sa implementation. Okay? So, ito yung framework no, ng plan. So, meron tayong pinatawag na direct and enabling interventions. Ito yung mga gagawin natin dapat para uh, ma-achieve natin yung targets. And then, ito yung outputs natin. And then, outcome, yung improved biodiversity status, which in turn, may enhance yung ecosystem services na uh, nare-receive natin from biodiversity, which will ultimately contribute to improve human well-being. Hindi, hindi siya uh, for the sake of conservation na hindi para sa uh, Filipino people para ma-insure nga yung continuing uh, provision 